Hey there, CPO here, and uh, today I'm going to go through the uh, blade balancing. So I'm getting to that point in my build where I'm about ready to actually affix the blades uh, in a little bit more of a permanent fashion to the uh, head of the helicopter and uh, start doing my my pitch uh, collective pitch adjustments. So um, I'm going to balance these blades. Uh, again, this is one of those steps that I think uh, everybody knows needs to be done uh, if you've built a helicopter before. Uh, but a lot of the build videos don't necessarily go into this. Uh, and as I mentioned, I'm trying to take this thing, uh, you know, every step of the way, anything I do uh, specific to the helicopter, I'm trying to document. So um, these are the blades that came with my uh, helicopter. Uh, look pretty cool. And uh, so I'm going to follow the finless bob method of, uh, of blade balancing. Uh, I know that there are easier ways to do it um, and uh, definitely uh, shorter ways to do it, but uh, I'm going to follow that method. Uh, the first thing he recommends doing, obviously, is getting a piece of paper uh, that has some 90-degree uh, some, uh, alignment marks. So I'm going to use my um, handy-dandy, it uh, would be nice if I had a pen that writes, there we go. So I'm just going to uh, to make a mark, and then I'm going to use my square here. So now at least I've got a reference point there. I've got something that that tells me what a 90 degree angle looks like on the piece of paper. That'll that'll become important because uh, I'm actually going to use this pen uh, as a as a balance point for the blades, right? Just like this. Um, and I want to be able to make sure that the blades are in alignment uh, perpendicular to this balance point. So this line here will help me keep that alignment. It just gives me a reference point. Uh, I know a lot of people use a main shaft for this balancing point. My main shaft is in use on the helicopter and I quite frankly don't want to take it all apart uh, to balance the blades. So. Uh, you know, pretty much anything that is a nice round uh, and and fairly flat uh, item. I'm just using one of these uh, tube style big pens. Um, as long as it's something that's not going to introduce any uh, any wobble or influence, and it's fairly straight, so I'm going to use it. And you can see uh, it works just fine for finding the pivot point on a blade. Uh, so that's uh, at least gets me prepped up. Um, and the other thing I'm going to need is a Sharpie marker. Uh, and because I'm going to use it to make some marks on these nice white blades. So one thing Finless Bob talks about is uh, taking a look at how your blades actually align from the bolt hole, not necessarily end to end. There may be some differences there. Um, and what I found works well is just taking the screw uh, the collar screw out of the grip uh, assembly from the head and just sticking it through uh, both of these blades and just taking a look at them. Uh, what I find is interesting here is how the carbon fiber doesn't line up. Uh, this one is actually further to the outside edge of the blade. Uh, and uh, actually the, the whole thing I'm assuming is carbon fiber. It's just the paint doesn't cover up certain areas. So um, I don't know if that's going to affect center of gravity, but we're going to find out because uh, that's what we're looking at doing is adjusting this, uh, you know, making sure the center of gravity is level on both blades. Um, so what I want to do, take this and just flip them so that they're opposing each other. Flip one side. Now I have the outsides uh, together. And then uh, what Finless recommends is just scissoring them out um, so that you can identify the point that they meet is the same distance uh, on each blade from this uh, this bolt hole. And it's a good way uh, to ensure that your alignments are based on uh, the hole when you, when you adjust center of gravity or check center of gravity as opposed to the overall length and trying to eyeball the length of the blade. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, just gonna make a dot right there 
And then what I want to do is flip this over so I can get a dot on the opposite side. And that way I'm dealing with just the whites. So I have my mark right there. So basically what I did, if I take out this screw, is I end up with um, these two marks that should be identical in distance from the screw head. And actually I'll put the screw in just so we can take a look at it. So, so that you can see how how they line up uh, those two dots uh, from the screw head when I when I have the screw in. So that's what I'm going to use as my reference point for center of gravity on both of these blades. Now I'm working on the bottoms because it's a lot easier than working on uh, the tops, especially with this. Uh, um, this trailing edge uh, being the black carbon fiber. So I'm just working on them upside down. Point being is that I want them to balance along that line uh, with those center points and then figure out how that affects center of gravity. So now that I have that, um, I can take my balancing tool here, uh, AKA ink pen. And what I wanna do is I'll just start out by um, setting the blade and getting these things aligned right down the middle of that pen. And then making sure that they're aligned perpendicular. All right, so they are uh, lined up. I have my ink pen aligned with this uh, vertical line. I have the blades aligned up with the horizontal line. And that little dot is centered on top of my pen there. So when I roll this, I want to look to see which one tips first. Okay, so that one tipped first, that bottom one tipped. And then the top one tips. So that tells me that this one, the bottom one is lighter on this end than this top one. And the reason being is the weight shifts sooner, uh, so the center of gravity for this is uh, is shifted over because it's lighter on that tip. And then the top one. So what I need to do now is apply some tape to that bottom blade to weight it down a little bit more on this outside edge so that it tips a little bit slower. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. So what I'm gonna to use to actually uh, tape this uh, to adjust my, uh, my center of gravity balancing is this taro sticker uh, that came with the blades. Um, I don't know how much of the sticker I'm gonna need, but I'm gonna figure that out and uh, I may trim off uh, what I don't need. But the key here is I, I need to get it uh, on the outside of this blade. And what I wanna do is wrap it around the leading edge of the blade, uh, not not the, the trailing edge, you want the tape. So as the blade's spinning around um, like this, you want the tape to be wrapped that way. That way it doesn't, uh, the air uh, movement doesn't pull the tape up. Um, so the blades, um, this is the leading edge, this flat edge. So it's important that you, uh, you keep that in mind when you apply your tape. You wanna have it on the on the leading edge, which is also the thicker edge of the blade, and it gets thinner at the trailing side. Um, so I'm gonna wrap that there, um, and I'll see how much of this I need. What I'll probably do is if I don't, you know, depending on how much weight I need, I'll take a pair of scissors and just trim off uh, what I don't need, and then, uh, and then go from there. So what that'll also do is give me a reference point for blade tracking later as well, because this is pretty good shiny, shiny tape. So uh, you know we'll see how that works. But at any rate, I'll do that, and then I'll be right back. So as it turns out, this single piece of taro uh, tape that came with the blades is exactly 
what I needed to balance them. Um, so uh, I, I did some, some checking and I basically just laid the tape on there, uh, lightly stuck, checked the CG and realized it was about as perfect as I can expect to get. So then I just finished taping it around. In hindsight, I probably should have moved it over towards the center a little bit. So if you're watching this, uh, learn from that. Basically, uh, this edge kind of bends around a little bit quicker than I thought it did. So it just didn't line up quite as right. Um, it could have been a little bit more square if I would have moved it over just a little bit. I was trying to keep it on the edge. Uh, but at any rate, with that tape on there, uh, now if I go back and I realign my pin to that uh, horizontal or vertical line, realign my marks on the pin and then align the blades with this horizontal line. Uh, now when I roll the pin, you can see they both move center gravity uh, dead on. So I think that's about as close as I can expect to get. So now that we have our <clears throat> center gravity defined, we need to figure out where that balance point is. Um, you can make a new mark. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and uh, take a look at where that pivot looks. Um, hit it with a ruler real quick and it looks like it's about a half inch to the outside of the blade uh, from the um, from the this uh, alignment mark here. So rather than making a new mark on the blade, I'm just going to know if I need to apply any tape uh, to adjust the balance now of, of the two blades to each other. I'll just do it about a half inch uh, inside, uh, or I guess it would be outside of this mark uh, on the blade. So, so now that I understand that the center of uh, gravity of the two blades is equal, now I need to, to show, uh, find a way to show that they are of equal weight to one another and balance to one another. So I don't need this anymore. <clears throat> um, so generally what happens here is, is a lot of times uh, guys will pull out a, uh, a blade balancing device that is designed for this. I don't happen to have one of those, um, but I'm full of a lot of great ideas. So um, I just have a screw here with two nuts and basically what I wanna do is build my own little balancing uh, mechanism here. So I'm putting the blades on as they would go on the helicopter, right? So if you think of, of the blade grips, they would look like this. Uh, and then I'm basically just putting them together through the same hole. I have a screw here that fits in that hole. So I have a nut that uh, is a little bit away from the head to give me some room to balance on something. And I'll show you what here in a second. And then I want another nut uh, on the other side and I'm going to tighten it down so that these two become snug to one another. It doesn't have to be super tight but I want it tight enough to where it's going to kind of lock in place so I'm going to just give it a little bit of a twist so now that I have that, what I need to do is make sure that they are aligned perfectly to each other. As a matter of fact, um, I could use this alignment uh, deal on the paper here that I already made just to kind of get a feel for if that's aligned on that direction, is that one aligned? I'm thinking... That looks pretty good to me. So the next thing I have is this fancy blade balancing device called two glasses. And I'm going to put them this way uh, for room for me. Um, and basically what I have are two, and I see people balancing blades on glasses all the time and it took me a while to figure out why. Um, but in my particular case, it's going to work out perfect because I can just rest this screw right on top of there and uh, what it's going to do, and you can already see it tipping, and I'll zoom out a little bit here. Um, it gives me uh, a little bit of a surface for that uh, screw to pivot on, 
and then I can figure out which blade is heavier than the other one. And I'm going to give it a second to kind of mellow out here, but I can already tell you this blade here is heavier than this blade, which is interesting because this is the one that I added tape on to uh, for the center of gravity change. So in addition to that little bit of tape on the outside for center of gravity, I'm probably going to need to add a little bit of tape uh, to the center point of that blade to weight it equally with the other one. And what I'm going to use for that is going to be black electrical tape. How much electrical tape do I need? I have no idea. Um, so that'll be the next test is to figure out how much I need. Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Get a piece a lot longer than you need. Uh, finding my reference point and just kind of lay it up here just to see. That's not where it's going to go, but it's just to kind of see how much tape. That's way too much tape. Cut some off. Still too much tape. It's still leaning that way. Cut some more off. Still too much. So as you can see here, this is a trial and error effort. This is what I've got so far. Um, and it's still too much. So now I'm going to go a little bit thinner. I'm going to cut it long ways like that. So it's about finding out how much tape is the right amount of tape. And uh, so here's what I currently have set up. I have just this little stri strip of tape here that seems to have everything balanced up nicely. And then uh, I'll show you what that balance looks like from the, uh, the other angle. So as you can see, this is what it looks like uh, balanced side to side. And it's leaning just a touch this way. Um, but I mean, <laughs> not much at all. That is, it is such a fine balance point um, that I don't think I could ask for anything more uh, out of a balance. But you can see what I'm looking for when I'm trying to get those blades, uh, blades balanced equally is from that one pivot point, that one little screw resting on those two glasses uh, that it should balance and come fairly close to level from side to side. And of course uh, the balance is so minute that it'll take a while to actually settle in and level there. Um, and then so what I end up with is uh, basically just this one little tiny piece of tape that uh, is used to balance this blade so uh, remembering I have about an, half an inch to the outside it doesn't have to be perfect and I want to fold it over the leading edge so I'm going to put a piece there and then fold it over that is my new balance point or my new uh, blade uh, alignment and as you can see perfectly centered, perfect balanced center of gravity on each blade and then perfectly balanced to each other. So that's the goal. Hopefully what that means, the result is gonna be fairly good blade tracking from the very get-go. I don't wanna spend a lot of time trying to sort out blade tracking. If I get this balancing done right, hopefully that'll go a long ways uh, towards that end. So uh, that's it and uh, appreciate you watching. Catch you on the next video.